Hi guys, welcome. So today in News in 30 Minutes, we have very interesting articles that can help you both in your essay as well as ethics paper. However, stay tuned till the end so that you get to know these articles. So let us start off with the important issues of 11th of October 2023. Okay. The first issue of today is India's space economy can reach 44 billion by 2023. It is given by in space. In space is Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center. So this in space is as you can see an independent autonomous agency under the Department of Space. Okay, so in space has come up with a decadal vision document. It has come up with a decadal vision document. So in the decadal vision document, it tells about the prospects of India in space. So basically what it tells is currently the global share of India in space economy. The global share of India in space economy is just 2%. So in space in its decadal vision document says that by 2033, they intend to increase the global uh, share of Indian space economy to 8%. And that 8% is 44 billion dollars. So this is what the vision document tells. Now the vision document also goes further and tells how they split this 44 billion dollars. The vision document tells that 33 billion dollars is mainly uh, achievable through domestic markets and the rest 11 billion dollars is achievable through exports. So this is the overall decadal vision document. What is important is to increase our global share in the space economy from 2% to 8%. That is the most important aspect of this document. Now you should know a few bodies that have been created of late. One is in space. Another is NSIL, New Space India Limited. Basically in space as well as NSIL both come under the Department of Space. NSIL is mainly in charge of uh, it is the commercial arm of the Department of Space. So what is it, uh, you know, what, what are its main responsibilities? It is in charge of manufacturing of uh, satellite vehicles through industries. That is through private industries. That is one. So basically it is a body that is in charge of making sure that these manufacturing of uh, satellite vehicles happen through the industries especially the private industries the second is it also acts as a technology transfer hub what does it mean it means it helps in commercializing it helps in commercializing space products in other words what does it mean it means i will give you an example currently navic Okay, the GPS version of India that is Navic is being used in iPhone 15. Correct. So this is nothing but commercialization of space products. So similarly, such space products, commercializing of that space products will be an in charge of a new space India limited. So basically new space India limited acts as a commercial arm of the government that in turn takes uh, part in facilitating the private players in not only manufacturing of launch vehicles, but also uh, technology transfer of space products as well as technology, uh, you know, uh, commercialization as well. So this is the main job of NSIL. So if we come to in space, what is the main job of in space? So in space, as the name suggests, it's Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization. So one, it is in charge of space promotion as well as authorization. So basically what is the job? Its job is to act as an interface. So its job is to act as an interface between one ISRO and two non-governmental institutions. Okay, so this is the main job of in space. So let us assume that there is one commercial entity that is not within the government ambit, but this commercial entity is a private player. 
and let us say this private player wants to use a ISRO infrastructure. This commercial player wants to use the ISRO infrastructure. If that person wants to use the ISRO infrastructure, just because that person is private, that person can gain accessibility by contacting in space. So basically in space acts as an interface between ISRO as well as non-governmental institutions or non-governmental uh, companies. Okay, sorry, non-governmental bodies, not companies, not governmental bodies. So this is the difference between NSIL and InSpace. However, the decadal vision document that InSpace has left is very prospective and it is very ambitious and it actually uh, gives a very good detailed explanation of how by 2023 we can achieve the target of 44 billion dollars. This is the first news of the day. The next is also concerning space. That is second spaceport of ISRO to be set up at Kulasekara Pattinam in Tutukudi district of Tamil Nadu. Okay, so this is a news. So basically, what they are doing is the first space port. Just like airport, space ports are places where the launches takes place. Correct. The first space port is present at Sri. Ari Kota. This is an island in Pulikat Lake. That is one. The next is it is known as Satish Dhawan Space Center. Okay, so this is the first spaceport. This is where both the PSLV as well as the uh, you know the PSLV uh, satellites are basically launched. All right. So now they are trying to uh, plan a second spaceport. However, this second spaceport that is being opened at Tutukudi district of Tamil Nadu will be dedicated. It will be dedicated to the launches of SSLVs. Okay, so SSLVs are small satellite launch vehicles. Okay, so this uh, spaceport will be purely for or exclusively for SSLVs. So what are SSLVs? They are also three stage launch vehicles. They are three stage launch vehicles. That is first point. The second is they can carry up to the payload of around 500 kg. Okay. The third is they can go up to the orbit of 500 kilometer. This is their planar orbit. This can carry the satellites up to 500 kilometers. So this is what is small satellite launch vehicles. So the second spaceport being developed is exclusively or dedicated exclusively for SSLVs. So this is another news that is there today. Okay. The next one. The next is, as you people know, 10th of October was the World Mental Health Day. So on 10th of October, the union health minister gave a few statistics which were alarming. The statistics is 10% of Indians suffer from mental illness. As you can see, this statement is given by union minister of health and family welfare. Hence, the credibility is high. And this is very unfortunate. 10% of the Indian population suffers from mental health illness. All right, that is the first statistics. The second, the same, uh, you know, the union minister also gives the second, this is the first one. The second uh, statement that the union minister makes is uh, mental illness, still, mental illness still carry a stigma and uh, approximately 70 to 90 percent of people suffering from mental illness have no access to treatment this is very very unfortunate guys all right so and even in india the psychiatrist for every thousand population is very very low in india all right so again this points to the abysmal figures in india hence much is to be done with respect to mental health care however the union minister also talks about a scheme or an initiative called tele i'm sorry it talks about a scheme called tele Manus initiative okay tele Manus initiative is a toll free call uh, you can definitely use it to give it to someone who's suffering from it or you can also use it 
all right it is always good to talk with someone whenever someone is suffering from mental health this is irrespective of the exam what is it and anything please make use of it if it is needed okay anyways what is telemanus helpline initiative okay telemanus helpline initiative is a toll free number the number is 14416 okay so this is a number that is there uh, 24/7 and all citizens can call this number if they are facing any type of mental health issues so the objective of this particular uh, you know uh, initiative is twofold one is to provide affordable and quality care for mental health issues affordable and quality care for the mental health issues that is one the second uh, you know uh, objective of this is in order to develop in order to develop robust mental health workforce okay so these are the two objectives of telemanus helpline initiative and the uh, minister also highlighted that Uh, from the time that it has started this initiative has started we have received around 3.5 lakh calls from across the country so this is good this is actually a good initiative hence uh, people can make use of it okay however the mental health scenario in india is uh, 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 bad as you can see the statistics and india being a young demographic country we cannot afford to have such huge numbers in mental illness hence Uh, you know steps must be taken to overcome this problem so this is about the mental illness the continuation of yesterday's part how informality of workforce also is creating more mental illness with that you got the statistics of what mental illness status is in india okay so this is about the mental illness the next initiative is again norms to fight malnutrition okay this norms what is this norms to fight malnutrition the ministry of women and child development have released something called the standard national protocol okay they have released something called the standard national protocol that is why this article is becoming relevant but what you should know is india suffers from chronic hunger india suffers from chronic poverty and hence malnutrition is a huge problem in india okay so uh, you should have a very good idea of what is the current status as well as what is the different initiatives that are taken by the government this is especially important for paper 2 of mains exam correct so before i deal with what exactly is the standard national protocol first let us understand the current scenario of malnutrition in india okay so what is the current scenario of malnutrition in india okay so if i take the nf hs 5 that is 2019 21 if i take this survey and if i compare it with nf hs 4 that is 2015 16 this survey if i take the three parameters okay if i take let us say the first is stunting okay the third second is wasting and the third is uh, underweight okay if i take these are the parameters now in nfhs 5 this as it has from 38.4% it has reduced to 35.5% okay and wasting as reduced from 21.0% to 19.3% okay as well as the underweight has reduced from 35.8% to 32.1% okay so you can see that india is moving on a positive side india is you know uh, taking drastic steps to reduce the you know uh, malnourishment parameters as you can see stunting has reduced by almost 3 percentage points and wasting has reduced by almost 2 percentage points as well as the underweight has reduced by almost 3 percentage points correct so this shows that india's achievement in malnutrition is going in a right direction but more has to be made because the volumes are very high as you can see almost one third one third one third of the two uh, of the you know uh, children 
under 5 are suffering from stunting, wasting as well as underweight. However, since we are moving in the positive direction, which is good, and this is the current scenario, if we take NFHS 4 survey and compare it with NFHS 5 survey. So use the statistics properly in your answers. However, let us come back now. So what is the standard national protocol? Okay. Now, before I go into the standard national protocol, let me just explain something called NRCs. Okay, this is Nutritional Rehabilitation, sorry, Nutritional uh, Rehabilitation Center. Okay, Nutritional Rehabilitation Centers. Okay, now these Nutritional Rehabilitation Centers are usually set up in district hospitals. Or they are also set up in community health centers. Okay, they are set up in district hospitals or they are also set up in community health centers. Okay, now these nutritional uh, rehabilitation centers, their job is to take in severely acute malnourished children, to take in severely acute malnourished children and make sure that enough attention is given so that their malnourishment is reduced. So this is the main idea of NRCs. So basically they take up children from 6 months old to 59 months. Okay. So this is NRC's job, Nash, uh, Nutritional Rehabilitation Centers. Now with the coming of standard, uh, you know, uh, national protocol. Okay. So what is happening is they have done few changes to make sure to streamline our nutritional parameters to make sure that we, ab we are able to fight effectively the malnourishment in India. They are doing certain changes. The first change is, as you see, NRCs used to take in severely acute malnourished children. Now, severely acute malnourished children are divided into two types. Okay. Now, here, one, they are those with the medical complication. And the second is those without medical complication okay so the protocol tells that sam that is severe acute malnutri malnutrition of children without the medical com complication they can go directly to anganwadis instead of going to uh, the nutritional rehabilitation centers those without medical complications can go to anganwadis those with medical complication can go into nrcs okay this is the first change now, when they go into Anganwadis, the accountability of Anganwadis has to be increased, hence the protocol has strengthened. The second thing is the accountability. The protocol has fixed accountability from the Anganwadi worker, from the Anganwadi worker down to, I'm sorry, from the Anganwadi uh, worker up to district magistrate. So the accountability is well fixed from the Anganwadi worker to the district magistrate. That's the second uh, you know, provision in this protocol. The third is it makes district magistrate. It makes district magistrate the sole point of actor who is responsible to monitor the nutritional status of a particular district. Okay, so this person is the nodal point of contact and this person is the nodal person who is responsible to monitor the nutritional status of the district. That is the third thing. The fourth, what uh, they have done is, as, it, as I initially told, it was decided that, I mean, usually NRCs take in children from 6 months to 59 months. But in the new protocol, they say that SAM children can be taken from 1st month to 6 month also. Instead of waiting from uh, 6 months to 59 months, from the first month itself, the severely acute malnutrition children can be taken into the nutritional rehabilitation centers. Okay. And the last important of this protocol is it follows community based approach. The importance of community is realized if you have to fight the malnourishment in India. Okay, how community based approach helps is because you have several counseling sessions. These counseling sessions are mainly for parents. Okay, and you also have several follow up, uh, you know, uh, care. 
okay so through counseling sessions and follow up care you, you are trying to bring in more and more community participation and through that you are putting a community based approach to solve malnutritionist problem so this is the five important provisions of the standard national protocol for malnutrition okay these are the norms that this article talks about to summarize it one the severe acute malnourished children are divided into two types without medical complications and with without medical complications go into anganwadi worker and with medical complications go to nrcs now the second is fixing of accountability from the level of anganwadi workers up to district magistrate the third is the district magistrate is the sole nodal point of contact and the person responsible for monitoring the nutritional status in the entire district the fourth is severe acute malnourished children is taken into nrcs from the first month itself rather than waiting till the sixth month and the last is the community based approach towards malnourishment so these are the five important the standard national protocol that has been brought in to fight malnourishment again very very important concept both for your prelims and mains they can ask you directly statement wise playing with severe acute malnourishment and other things okay here uh, one other th uh, two other things that they have introduced is uh one is the concept of buddy mother okay the concept of buddy mother means uh you are going to uh, you know arrange a mother of a child who is malnourished okay a mother of a child who is malnourished with a mother of a child who is not malnourished that is who is healthy so what happens is when you are arranging two buddies to stay with one another it is uh, helping the mother who is a child of malnourished to understand the caring understand the habits from the mother of a child who is healthy so this helps in exchange of guidance okay this is one one concept one more concept is how do you identify that a child is severely acute malnourished okay basically the yard line for identifying a child being severely acute malnourished is low weight to height ratio okay this if this low weight to height ratio if this weight to height ratio is below who standards then you decide that that particular child is severely acute malnourished sometimes this low weight to height ratio may not be uh, indicative of the malnourishment so in that case there is another test again this test is known as bilateral pitting o e d e m a bilateral pitting odima okay what it means is along the foot okay they they tell them they tell the child to keep the foot and on the foot they will press with their thumb for 3 seconds and then they will release the thumb when they press the thumb on their foot for 3 seconds and then release if that thumb impression stays there that means that that person is malnourished okay this is the bilateral pitting odema that pit that impression of the thumb the indentation stays there even after the thumb is removed it shows that the feet is swollen it shows that the child is malnourished this is another uh, test that is done um in order to decide if the child is suffering from severe acute malnourished okay with this there are some other tests like appetite testing and other things but these are the two important things i felt can come as a question in your prelims exam all right so this is about the malnourishment scenario in india which is again very bad and unfortunate however the current scenario as i told you the nfhs 5 survey stunting improved by 3% point wasting improved by 2 percentage points and underweight increased by 3 percentage points when we compare it with nfhs 4 survey which is a good news use this statistics properly in your answers to show the current scenario okay don't paint a dark picture definitely there are challenges but we are moving in a right direction so please make sure that you make it as evident as possible all right so this is about this issue the next is a very very excellent article that is written that talks about india's very own truth commission okay so what happened is the indian social institute the indian social institute has set up something called peace and reconciliation unit for india okay i'll keep uh, telling them as trcs 
okay trcs means truth and reconciliation commission so i'll keep referring them as trcs okay so it has set up this trcs in india why is this trcs set up in india so important this is the uh, you know article talking about this is a very excellent article that you can use in your essay as well as ethics before i get into this peace and reconciliation unit for india let me talk about the concept called truth and reconciliation commissions okay the truth and reconciliation commission was basically set up in 1996 in south africa it was authorized by nelson mandela and it was chaired by it was chaired by desmond tutu okay now see during the fight in south africa for apartheid okay during the fight for apartheid nelson mandela actually was in the gorilla warfare camp desmond tutu was actually in the satyagrahi camp nelson mandela wanted violence to fight apartheid and desmond tutu wanted peace and forgiveness to fight apartheid nelson mandela goes to jail he goes to robben island r o b b e n robben island he stays there for 28 years in the 28 years when he stays there he then realizes that violence is not a way out violence and getting freedom through violence will create more violence hence nelson mandela realized that only through non violence only freedom is achieved through non violence only through peace and only through forgiveness can we progress so once nelson mandela was out of the prison once south africa achieved uh, freedom nelson mandela asks desmond tutu to set up this trcs okay so trcs is actually a creative morality concept it is a creative morality concept created by desmond tutu some people also argue that desmond tutu was a nobel prize winner before setting up this trcs so they they say that he has to be given second nobel prize for this creativity okay however trcs is basically truth and reconciliation commissions so this was set up so what happened in south africa is in this commissions both the victims and the perpetrators both these victims and perpetrators will come they will explain their case and the perpetrators will ask for amnesty from from both civil and criminal prosecution okay so basically it is just coming and trying to show that you are aware of the mistake that you have done coming and telling that you are uh, reformative in nature and you are ready to reform yourself and this allows the victims on the other part to forgive you that is what is the truth and reconciliation commission so this is a commission where the meeting was i mean the the conference was held where victims also were given a chance to talk perpetrators were also given a chance to talk both uh, after after the you know uh, uh, conference i mean after the uh, talks were held the perpetrators were then given amnesty from both civil as well as criminal cases so it is this trc is, is based on the principle of it is based on the principle of forgiveness forgiveness plays a very very important role from an individual perspective to a nation's perspective forgiveness is very very uh, important because see desmond tutu says he, he gives a very excellent elaboration of what forgiveness is he says forgiveness provides for new continuity forgiveness provides for new continuity he also says forgiveness is the recognition of is the recognition that life can still surprise you it is a recognition that life can still surprise you okay in this trcs one very evident story i'll tell is in the trcs there was a mother who confronted a murderer of that mother's child and when that mother confronted the mother uh, the murderer of uh, her child the mother told that particular murderer this statement and i quote as a murderer 
you have lost your humanity only if i forgive you we both can recover our humanity okay this is uh, end, uh, end of the quote okay so this is i'll, I'll just repeat uh, in quotes as a murderer you have lost your humanity only if i forgive you we both can recover our humanity unquote okay so this is basically what the truth and reconciliation commission is all about it is purely based on the principle of forgiveness which provides for new continuity in this society okay so this is what uh, now uh, coming back to the peace and reconciliation you know unit that is set up in india by the indian social institute now this is a very good social experiment why this is very very important in india is in this current uh, era in the current era of digitalization in the current era of e-commerce in the current era of technology induced society people are you know there, there is a lot of friction among different groups there is a lot of friction in the digital space as well in, in top i mean on top of that we also have internal security problems so if we have to search for a social solution this social sec experiment that has been done uh, by the Indian Social Institute by setting up the Peace and Reconciliation Unit for India, this plays an important role. This can also become one of the ways to find solutions to create peace and stability in our society. Can this also be a way to stop any type of friction between different ethnic groups in the Northeast India? That can also be uh, you know, uh, thought upon. So this has wide possibilities in India because its applicability is enormous in a diverse country like India and it is very very important in this country like India which has diversity and this diversity is made wrong use by several people okay so this can act as something that can soften the diversity and help people coalesce and act as one unit the principle of forgiveness plays a very very crucial role in a country as diverse as India okay so this is what is the India's very own truth commission Okay. Now, there are several philosophers who have actually argued for uh, the principle of forgiveness. I will just give you two uh, thinkers that I have written it before and to save time. You can just pause the video and then read it out. One is Jacques Derrida. Okay. Jacques Derrida is a philosopher. He came up with the theory of deconstruction. However, that is not important. What he argues is that it was the excess of forgiveness that anchored the creation and rational of society. Okay, this shows forgiveness plays an important role in society. Again, Anna Arendt, who is very famous, who is also famous for the theory of action. She says that the idea of social contract anchored in the Anglo-Saxon law was politically inadequate. It was politically inadequate. The laws, the British colonial uh, law that we have in India, that is also politically inadequate. It was the vulnerability and breakdown of these social contracts that invited forgiveness in social life. Okay, so both these thinkers and philosophers, one is a philosopher, another is a political theorist, both point out that the forgiveness principle plays a very, very important role for the society's stability and the society's progress. So let us take this uh, as a principle in our everyday life as well and also learn how to use this in your essay as well as ethics. It's a very, very, very beautiful article that is written. Okay, so this is about this. The next is another article that says the Morby Bridge tragedy. Okay, now let me give a background of this. So Morby Bridge, okay, this bridge is located on Machu River okay and this bridge collapsed on october 30th of 2022 and it killed 135 people and injured 56 others okay now when this bridge collapsed the morby bridge tragedy when this bridge collapsed a special investigation team was set up okay now when they investigated now the municipality the morby municipality had delegated this particular job of maintenance see this is a bridge that is a british era suspension bridge okay it is a british era suspension bridge and the maintenance of this was delegated by the morby municipality to a 
local industrial group called Oreva. Okay, as you can see, it is here. It was given to Oreva. And what this Oreva did is they had subcontracted this to some other non-competent you know, group. Now, this resulted in the collapse of the bridge killing so many people. Now, this is the unfortunate event that gives you an example for one dereliction of duty. The second is diffusion of responsibility. Okay, the third is bounded accountability. Bounded accountability. Okay, these are the three things. Now, what is bounded account accountability? Now, see, the SIT says that it indicts, uh, it indicts Oreva group for serious lapses. So, they have told that, SIT has told that this uh, event has happened because of serious operational and technical lapses okay they have told that this has happened because of serious operational and technical lapses so it is the fault of the maintenance team who have not maintained it but whom will you fix the accountability is it the subcontracted party from the oreva group or is it the oreva group or is it the morbi municipality who had delegated the job who did not do a proper job in monitoring the maintenance work so this is the bounded accountability where do you fix it how do you you know uh, make the punishment proportional for the municipality for the oreva group as well as the subcontract group who, whom will you punish more whom will you punish less this is the problem Correct. So this provides another excellent case study for you to write in the exam about direction of duty, diffusion of responsibility as well as bounded accountability. Okay. So again, an excellent case study for your ethics paper. So this is about the important issues of 11th of October. Very interesting two articles at the end that you can make use of in different papers as well. So I hope you are liking this initiative and I hope you people are sharing this initiative with your friends because the more you share, the greater the reach, the more motivated I am to do this on a daily basis. Thank you so much guys. I'll meet you tomorrow. Bye.